this is the question, what's the difference between passion and purpose? And um, so I kind of drew a circle and I wrote passion in there. And I was like, what you love? And then drew another circle and wrote purpose. And I wrote what the world needs. But they intersected, they, the circles accidentally crossed over and I wrote a little heart in there. I'm like, that's the sweet spot. That's, that's fabric and free fabric. I feel like you can't have one without the other. I didn't grow up with any money and my mom made all my clothing growing up, um, which I thought was like having a personal stylist. My friends are like, are you poor? I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, I look at, look at this. But I just never went into a boutique. It was never something, it was just dreamy, the idea. And then when I started going in boutiques and saw $400 t-shirts, I realized this is probably not something, you know, that is, could be part of my life. But I loved the feeling of, you know, just, them offering me a glass of champagne and walking my bag around and all of those things. And I was like, could I create a place that you didn't have to have a million dollars to feel like a million dollars? Now it's very much about making women feel beautiful one piece of fabric at a time and keeping a mission pretty simple. We've all, as leaders, created a mission statement that's seven pages long, and so you'll ask your team the mission and they all just kind of look around. <laughs> so just creating something that's real, and that's what we want to do. One, you know, each customer, each dress, um, just making them feel beautiful, more beautiful than when they walked in. You know, when your definition of success kind of changes, and I was like, building all these things kind of for myself and you know I could kind of play it off that I'm building it for my customers and my company and but it was a very big moment for me so that year I love going on mission trips to Africa and we were over there and I brought my team over there and I just remember in those jeeps we're driving through and like there's just gotta be more and I come home from that trip and I, I pull my whole team around and I was like y'all so we're gonna be changing our mission, um, you know, really from passion and adding in purpose. And so we always serve our customers, but what if we could have something, a boutique, that is not under 100, it's zero. Basically what Free Fabric is, just to understand, is we create completely free boutiques that look like this. They have chandeliers, they have beautiful clothing in them, but they're inside of safe houses and shelters and for our beautiful homeless women that, you know, this is not a priority for them, but it's something that makes them feel more beautiful um, and dignity and this, it's not in the bottom of a church in a big bin that they're sorting through. No clothing that's donated has a hole in it, a missing button, anything like that. And so the beautiful part of that to ignite Free Fabrics mission is that we have volunteers come, women in the communities where the, the stores are, and um, the safe houses kindly let us come in and be with their women and shop, one-on-one, -on -one, personal styling. And it is something that, you know, the women start so scared and they're, you know, like, why are you here? You could be anywhere. And by the end, we're playing Beyonce, we're doing runway shows, and the light that comes back, it's a confidence, you know, the verse is she is clothed in strength and dignity, laughs without fear of the future. And you get to actually, you know, experience that. And you hear stories of these women that are total rock stars, you know, strength. And, and then what an actual, you know, dress does. It's, they say, this is the dress I'm gonna wear to go get my son back, you know, in court next week, or this is the dress I'm gonna go up and, you know, against my pimp and be able to be strong and dignified. It is just so powerful. So the, the power of an outfit is just so beautiful. But for me, the idea of success that clothing, which is my passion, can do something so powerful like that, really bringing those two together is, is what makes fabric. When you're a founder and a CEO and you're not changing a business model, it's just a process that fits so perfectly into your racks, into your model, um, and inspires your team. It's a pretty special thing. Every store, every single day, one of my KPIs is wow. So we have, we have all the KPIs that every CEO knows. One that I have is wow. Wows are in all different ways, but it really, it's that inspiration of, it's, it's a million different nonprofits all day to everybody in the way that they need it, just being able to see them. What I think CEOs don't know is 
If there's a way you can give a license for your company to just do it in different ways, that is what I celebrate. And so I celebrate it at all company meetings saying, let me tell you what somebody did. And let me tell you what somebody did. I have, at my headquarters, we have, the donations are in the back. We've set it up like a boutique and it's where we source out all the free boutiques. And we had someone come in one day, um, we have a train station by our headquarters and she came in and she's like, do you have clothing here? And you know, we're always like, oh, it's you know, it's a clothing store. And she's like, okay, well, I, you know, I just moved here, I have no clothing. And one of my, I wasn't even in the office, one of my teammates said, yeah, come on in. She brings her to the back, they shop, she gets, you know, eight outfits, they're taking pictures, they're having the best time. She's, they're both crying, she's like, I can't believe you let me do this, and she leaves. And this isn't something that my company will call and ask me if they're allowed to do. I think a lot of CEOs know about how to structurally set up something that there's volunteer opportunities with your company. I think tying that together with the day-to-day -day that keeps them thinking, wow, this moment right now, like, well, we had somebody come in and they shared their cancer diagnosis with us before their family. And we had a little faith necklace um, and my stylist just slipped it in her bag. And I mean, the calls I get from this. So I think that's the part where purpose comes alive, not necessarily in a manual. First of all, anytime someone on your team saying, can you have lunch, you know something's coming. No one's really just hungry and wants to have lunch with the CEO. So, can you have lunch? And I was like, yes. Like it was a crazy day, but I knew we needed this lunch. So I sit there, sure it's gonna be about her, right? And life and how I can grow her career and what I can do. And so I'm in my CEO mode. One question, she said, are you okay? And I'd been asked that question a billion times and I kindly answered, Yes, I'm, you know, I'm doing this and I've got this and I'm okay and this. I sat there and answered for the first time in my life truthfully. I was like, I don't, I don't think so. And she's like, okay, well, what do we do? I'm like, I don't know. I said, well, maybe I stop checking email and take a, like a week break. And she's like, well, maybe it's like a month. And I'm like, and I think this is the part where, you know, I want every CEO to hear, you're like, but what would my company do without me? Well, hopefully, if your company can do without you, you've done a really good job. And yes, there's gonna be gaps, and yes, you're needed and all of that, but what if your company could hold up a space for you to go catch a breath and come back into a place that you're, the meaning's there? It clicked my engine back on, it lit my fire again, and I got to also, best, the best part from a business perspective, I got to come back into my company that I'd never been out of and look at it as a customer and look at it for all the beautiful things that it is. You're so critical of what you're not doing right, and I was like, this place is incredible. But when you come back in and you can go back into the dream mode and you can go back into the innovation, your company's excited. I mean, they were so excited to hear what I had to say. What do we do now? Um, what's next? And so if you've been on a path that you can't seem to get to that space, um, a break is beautiful. When a CEO gets on autopilot, it's really hard because we're made to, to expand and to grow and create. And so I did a whole research on dreaming. And I asked people, and I thought this was gonna be a very great conversation. No one likes to talk about dreaming. It's like, so tell me how you dream. And they're like, how I what? I'm like, it was so personal. And I went, I'm like, wait, so do you sit down with a paper or do you go on a run? Or, and the answer that I got mostly that defines those conversations were, oh, I don't do that anymore. I don't have time for that. I did it as a kid. It doesn't always work out. So what's the point? And I remember thinking like, the point is you're somebody's mom. Like those kids want you dreaming and you're somebody's boss. And like people want to be around people that are like, guess what's next, guess what's next. So I, I make dream time and it sounds so crazy, but every year I sit down for, you know, a day in a space that, you know, I love grass fields and go on a long run to get my mind to stop thinking about everything. And then simply just ask myself like, what are things that could bring massive joy into my life? It's not a swirling in your head, driving the car dream. It's you caring about yourself so much that you're gonna take the time to 
think, what your soul and your heart really, really, really desires. Most people don't go there because the fear of it not happening. So guess what? When the dreams don't come true, my, my kids and I always laugh. They're like, it's okay, there's another one. Don't get intimidated by dreaming. You can't do it wrong. The roadmap to success for dreaming as a CEO is not the destination, it's the journey. As a CEO, you want to hit the target, hit the finish line on time, on budget. That's not how dreaming works. The courage and the you know, beauty and power comes from simply just dreaming and seeing what it opens everyone else up to. I'm a creator, I'm a builder, I can put it out there. But they did the hard work of maintaining the operations manuals, creating that, that the consistency can let it grow and build on. And, you know, it gives me chills to think that, you know, I get so much credit for creating this dream because that's what it was. Like, how in the world, you know, could you have all these clothing stores and do what you love? But so many people, so selfishlessly, and with so much heart, talk to the customers every single day. I don't get to talk to my customers. So, Thank you for caring about them. Thank you for seeing what they need, not only from the outfit to look fabulous, but they see their heart and they add the little thing in their bag or the little text and the amount of hearts we've been able to touch because of them. Like there is no possible way that fabrics um, and free fabric, fab free fabric would even be able to provide that love and confidence for so many women in ways that I couldn't even imagine. I dreamed one thing and Wow, like they brought it in a whole, you know, expanded, beautiful light.